Well, good morning, and it is good to be with you yet again. Uh, today is day 24 of our uh, devotionals, our Advent and Narnia devotionals. Today's devotional is titled, The Armor of God. Our scripture is from Ephesians 6, 11 through 17. It says this, Put on the whole armor of God, so that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For our struggle is not against our enemies of blood and flesh, but against the rulers of against the authorities, against the cosmic powers of this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God so that you may be able to withstand on that day and having done everything to stand firm. Stand therefore and fasten the belt of truth around your waist and put the breastplate of righteousness on as shoes for your feet put on whatever will make you ready to proclaim the gospel of peace. With all of these, take the shield of faith, with which you will be able to quench all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Amen. The Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Well, we talked about yesterday, Father Christmas. And now in the story of the line in which the order of uh, Father Christmas arrives finally, it is finally Christmas, winter is over, and Father Christmas gives these children, uh, these three characters, Peter, Susan, and Lucy, gifts. Gifts that are tailored to their personalities, tailored to their talents, their abilities, and calls them uh, to a destiny. And it calls them to live with purpose. But as Father Christmas arms uh, Peter, Susan, and Lucy with armor and weapons to stand against the White Witch and her army, uh, they are only children, right? We recognize that, but they are ready for battle. Sometimes throughout history, we have seen that as humans, as Christians, we have to take up real weapons to fight it for justice, to fight against uh, the wiles of the devil, the evil of, and wickedness of the world in our fallen human nature. But more often, our Christian ethics uh, it means that, as Paul encourages us, uh, that we will choose instead to fight with truth, with uh, righteousness, with faith, with scripture, and, and the gospel. Uh, but Advent, Advent is a time for making peace. It's one of the great themes of Advent. But also, it is for standing against injustice and shining light into places of darkness and sin in our world. Preparing the way for Christ isn't something we only do in private in our own hearts, uh, but also it's a it's a it's a practice of we prepare uh, the way for Christ in our communities uh, across the world. Paul reminds us that the armor of God isn't to be used against other people, uh, other human beings, but against the spiritual forces of evil. Uh, it's much harder, though, to know uh, what that looks like, what that means to swing a spiritual sword uh, against the devil uh, than to read about uh, Edmund and Peter uh, swinging literal swords against uh, an evil army and an evil queen. But scripture shows us that the strengths that God chooses to anoint us with, the gifts that he chooses to anoint us with, uh, do not come, do not spring from this raw, brutish power, but virtues of the Christian faith, uh, such as faith, such as cleverness and wisdom and humility and love and grace and mercy, uh, many, many more of those virtues. The armor of God doesn't uh, make us look like a bunch of medieval knights, right? Uh, it's not a literal suit of armor. Uh, so it doesn't, yeah, it doesn't make us look like a bunch of medieval knights as much as it look, makes us look like, um, to use a few scriptural examples, uh, an old man traveling with his wife across the desert, leaving his family behind traveling to the promise, the promised land, the promise that God had given him. It looks like a, a, a younger brother who, a 
young kid, sly kid, who tricks his brother into a birthright. Uh, a prisoner interpreting dreams. A young shepherd boy standing against a giant. Uh, or a young woman agreeing to sacrifice her reputation uh, and possibly her possible fiancé because God asked her to carry a child out of wedlock. Yeah, I'm speaking about uh, Mother Mary. Uh, but like, like the Pevensey children, we're not expected to carry every item of spiritual defense at all times. We uh, are not the fighters in the fight, right? The armor that God gives us is the equipping of the Holy Spirit coming into our lives. But we prepare ourselves and our communities for the Savior. And what that means is it means taking seriously our call to stand against evil and injustice. Whether our armor is a, a skill is a skill with words or a skill in actions or a skill in leadership, the financial resources to make a gift of charity, uh, or the inner resources to take a stand at a protest or a, a meeting, a board meeting or a school board meeting. It's to take the armor of God that has given you, uh, that God has given you seriously. We take that seriously to, to understand what it means to put on our lives whatever we need to, to be able to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. And it means to prepare the way of the Lord. So that all the earth, all the ends of the earth, shall see the salvation of God. Amen. Well, just a few questions for us to reflect on today. What battles or causes need to be fought in your town, excuse me, your neighborhood, your workplace? What issue is important enough for you to fight for it? And what weapons or armor has God given you? Uh, what, a, what talents has God given you to stand against in, injustice and evil in your community? Tough questions, for sure. Challenging questions, especially as we approach a new year. What new ways may God be calling us to serve his name? Amen. Let's pray. Gracious Lord, we thank you for giving us gifts of knowing us so intimately, you know how we can can jump into uh, the kingdom of God and serve your holy name. So we thank you for equipping us and preparing us to stand in your kingdom and fight for righteousness and your gospel. Pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, I hope you have a great day, and I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Bye-bye.